uh, it's not happening actually. Good morning, dear colleagues. <clears throat> Wish you all happy Teachers' Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker and my colleague, Professor Archana Moon. Hello. She did her. She did her uh, graduation from Hislop College, Nagpur. Post graduation from Post Graduate Department of Biochemistry and a PhD from Postgraduate Department of Biochemistry. She joined the university services in the year 2003 and she has a teaching experience of 19 years. She has significant achievements in the field of biochemistry, microbiology, biotechnology applications, which are uh, in phytochemistry, antibiotic resistance and cancer biology. She is enthusiastic researcher. Uh, <laughs> She has been awarded with uh, 12 national and international awards. 
she is also a phd guide she has guided successfully uh, to two phd students and three phd students are right now working under her supervision she has published more than 50 research papers in the journals of national and international repute she has completed five major research projects she is principal investigator of covid diagnostic center of rashtra sant tukdo ji maharaj nagpur a university center she had submitted more than 52 uh, nucleoid sequences to the ncbi gene bank she has also filed four pat patents and has also signed mous with different industries it is now my pleasure to uh, invite uh, professor archana moon madam to deliver her talk on the topic meta analysis of oral breast and lung cancers madam your voice is not audible dr archana madam kindly unmute Now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, now you are audible. Yeah. Good morning, one and all. I wish you all a happy Teachers Day, Doctor Tungra. Thank you, Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, 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 Madam. You are audible. Thank you, yes, sir, Doctor Tungra, for introducing me. I am humbled. At the outset, I thank Doctor Tungra, the coordinator for the refresher course in life sciences, for giving me this opportunity. to share some of the findings from studies conducted at the pgtd biochemistry we as academicians and researchers have experienced the effects of the covid pandemic today's findings are the outcome of our dry lab research work which was done for a period of 2 years uh, conducted at the pgtd biochemistry and which is being presented today in front of you so i do not have an expertise in statistics per se i have made an attempt to learn this important branch of science and apply it in this study we are all aware that there is a vast domain of information which is available on the net data present therein is humongous and rather very confusing with correct search engine optimization one is able to retrieve the data of interest data sets of interest and information of relevance studying and analyzing this data is metadata so we can define metadata as data about data so we are going to generate data from the data that is already existing for breast lung and oral cancers so that is what my attempt has been so when we analyze this kind of data it is known as a meta analysis it is a statistical analysis that consists of a huge collection of outcomes to integrate the findings this can be done from existing previously conducted studies and then this data is examined to obtain an overall effect and to get clarity in different studies that have generated these data set it is efficiently done by using lots of computer databases also and we need to have uh, at hand a statistical software a key benefit of these approaches is the aggregation of information leading to a higher statistical power and a more robust point estimated than is possible from merely studying the individual study or individual data set the data which is required for meta data analysis is obtained from regional retrospect in my case we have uh, obtained this data from retrospective patient files and also we have compared it with the online uh, databases that are up present so we saw an entirely different picture when we were studying uh, regional retrospective patients data versus the online data that is available the metadata analysis for oral breast and lung cancers uh, was done on the basis of age gender histopathological reports that were available percentage of hormone receptors if a hormone receptor is involved as in case of breast cancer uh, tumor stage tumor grading etc 
the first step in metadata analysis uh, involves the definition of what is the theoretical relationship of interest that needs to be uh, identified. And the second step involved the collection of the population studies, and which in turn provided us with the secondary data uh, with respect to the relationship that I have established to conduct this particular study. Uh, since we were dealing with retrospective data of oral breast and lung cancer patients, uh, the first uh, step of metadata analysis is always data collection. We gathered the data for oral breast and lung cancers from Cancer Hospital in Nagpur and uh, GMC and IGMC, basically. And there were some other private clinics and hospitals as well where we have approached uh, around 23 different uh, cancer hospitals in Nagpur were approached at different points of time in the two year study span. And uh, having a quite a sizable number of patients and data with us. We also included uh, data from online databases for US, for Netherlands, and for India as well. The second, uh, from these sources, we have uh, totally received 602 patients' data for statistical analysis from the uh, direct method, that is from the hospitals. And the second step will be data processing. So the first was data uh, gathering. The second is data pre-processing. The data which is available on the net uh, or the data that we got from the hospitals for each of these cancers uh, was confusing. And uh, like, if I can give you an example, for oral cancer, if uh, somebody is uh, a patient, say around 10 patients uh, have come to a hospital, not necessarily each of the 10 patients have uh, undergone the same tests. They belong to the same gender. They belong to the same age group or they belong. Uh, they have been uh, treated with the same medicines. The follow ups have been at the same point of time. It's not like that. So all these things are totally varied for each of the uh, patient. So that's why. Even this is true for the data that we collected from the online databases. So there was no uniformity of the data. Hence the need to do a meta-analysis. Uh, the data pre-processing is a data mining technique that involves transforming the raw data. So whatever data we got from the hospitals and the online data sets was raw data or primary data. So we had to first arrange or pre-process it into an understandable format because the real world data that was there was incomplete, was inconsistent, and and or was lacking in lots of traits and trends. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Could have you changed the slide? Yeah, I'm going to start. I'm just into the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Data pre-processing processing will consist of data cleaning, data integration, and data reduction. Because data cleaning is essential because the things that I don't need, which variables I won't be needing. For the study, I have to remove them. Data integration so that when I'm comparing the two data sets, I need to integrate the data and data reduction, whatever was redundant or duplicate, I had to remove that. Then I have to transform the primary data that has been cleaned, integrated, reduced into data uh, which was transformed. This is the transformed data. And then I have to discreetly analyze this data. So these are the different steps of data pre processing. Okay. Uh, we use analyze, analyze it software, uh, which is an important statistical tool. Okay. So we will go into the details. I will start my presentation from here. Okay. So today we are going to study the meta analysis of cancer with respect to oral, breast, and lung cancer. So after gathering data from lots of hospitals in and around Nagpur, which targeted a lot of people from MP and Vidarbha region, and uh, data from online sources, we will begin with the mechanics. So first I will deal with the oral cancer patients. I have taken three different cancers because it will give me an idea, or it will give us an idea as to how to approach, approach for different diseases. Uh, somewhere I had to delete some data for a particular cancer. For some other cancer, I had to take that particular data. So when I'm 
bearing all after one after the other when we study all the pre cancer uh, meta analysis we can very well get a picture as to how i have uh, restructured the original data So the first thing that one wants, needs to know about cancer is the TNM staging. Okay, so if you see on the left-hand panel, there is TX, T0, T1S, T1, T2, T3, T4, right? So these are the terminologies that are used. Uh, so if it is a TX, so there's no available information on primary tumor for that particular patient. If it is a T0, there is no evidence of primary tumor at all. If it is TIS, it means only carcinoma in situ on the primary sites uh, or the primary tumor is located. T1 grading system, it means that it is less, the tumor is less than 2 centimeters. T2 means it is from 2 to 4 centimeters. T3 is greater than 4 centimeters, the tumor is, and T4 is greater than 4 centimeters. And it is also involves the natrium, the pterygoid muscles, the muscles of the tongue or skin if you are considering the oral cancer. Then the words MX, M0, M1 also show you the metastasis. This TNM system for classification of malignant tumors was developed by a French uh, scientist, Pyodynax, and uh, it describes the anatomical extent of disease based on the assessment of three components T, the extent of the primary tumor, M, the absence or presence and extent of regional lymph node metastasis, and M, the absence or presence of distant metastasis. So T, N, M are the three terminologies that will be used. The addition of numbers like T, X, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or, or N, 0, N, 1, 2, 3, 4, and subdivisions 3, A, 3, B, 3, 4, are all uh, showing indicate or they show the extent of the malignant disease okay uh, there are always two classifications that are followed for tnm staging one is the clinical classification called as the small c tnm and uh, pathological classification which is the pt once we know the tnm staging it is important to understand the staging as said. When do we say it is a stage 1 cancer? When do we say it is a stage 2 cancer? Okay, so depending upon the T category, the N category and the M category, if there is T1, N0, M0, it is called as stage 1 cancer and so on and so forth. If it is stage 4B, it could be belonging to any category of T, any category of N and M1 category is known as the highly metastatic stage 4B. So after knowing the staging, it will be very easy for us to know how the entire system works. So we'll be begin with uh, an introduction to the oral cancer. Uh, the statistics say that uh, it is the sixth most common malignancy in the world. And it is of major concern to us in India because of the prevalent oral habits of Beetle quit chewing, tobacco, smoking, and alcohol consumption. In the top three of all cancers in India, uh, most of them have been seen for uh, in the oral cavity. Uh, about 95% of oral cancers are the OSCC type. Hence, I have for my study taken oral squamous cell carcinoma, and there are so many other carcinomas cinemas which fall into the 5% category I have not taken because then the data also uh, I do not get that much of data if I select the lesser frequency voila, cancer. So I selected this was the first selection that I had to do. So I stuck to OSCC. Okay and uh, where do we find OSCC? It is, is a malignant new, new growth on the lip, floor of the mouth, cheek lining, gingiva and palate of the tongue. So these are the uh, usual sites of oral cancer. So we are going to study OSCC. I've already told you the etiological risk factors for oral cancer on the left-hand side. Uh, what we see is smoking for the others beyond this are uh, smoking. And then there could be HPV infections. There could be environmental factors, the dietary changes, 
that could damage the DNA, like acylation, deacylation mechanisms, methylation mechanisms. Even though so many DNA damages do occur, a cell has uh, a control over it, so it does not cause cancer every time. Uh, optimal DNA damage can be handled and the cell will go into repair mechanisms and the DNA can be repaired and again the cell division cycle will continue. But if there is more than optimum damage to the cell, again the cell has a regulatory mechanism whereby it will go in for uh, programmed cell death or apoptosis as we call it. But if the damage is too much, the cell, if the apoptotic machinery fails, then the cell will go with mutations and DNA damage towards cell growth, which is known as the premanagelian state. In case of oral cancers, you can see as white flakes in the oral cavity, it is known as the oral leukoplakia or red spots as known as erythroplakia. And this will eventually uh, lead to oral carcinoma, which is uh, malignant tumor. So from pre-malignant, it turns into malignant. There are lots of diagnostic tests that have been done till date. So we have biopsy, fine needle aspiration, incision and biopsy, laryngoscopy, MRI, CT, PT, other different uh, diagnostic tests. I have put this slide in here because uh, when we went to collect the patient's data, we saw a lot of people were going for biopsy, some were going for laryngoscopy, depending upon the site of the tumor. Uh, some were going for MRI, some were going for PET. So there's no uniformity for diagnostic tests also. There were a number of uh, treatments uh, which are available. People have opted for and the doctors have suggested. Common ones are uh, cited here. They are chemotherapy, radiation therapy, immunotherapy. Chemotherapy, maybe adjuvant therapy is the one which was commonly seen. So the aim of this, with this background, uh, we will come to the aim of the study and how I went about it. To perform the computer-based statistical analysis of secondary data. So the data that I got from the hospitals and the data set uh, which was available online was the primary data. After cleaning the data and uh, keeping my data ready, uh, which was the secondary data uh, that I had after doing the uh, data collection, uh, I pre-processed the data. I kept it ready. The clean data was now known as a, is now known as the secondary data, which can be used for statistical analysis. I did it by two simultaneous uh, analysis. I did by two simultaneous uh, data. Uh, already I told you, uh, I have collected some uh, data from health centers of Nagpur and the indirect method was through <coughs> internet-based uh, uh, data collection. Uh, so this was the direct method that we followed and this is the indirect method so as to you know how we have formed it. When we went for the direct method where we collected uh, uh, data from the hospitals, it was rather very difficult to convince the doctors over there and the in charge of reports over there why we need the study uh, data sets why we need the patient's uh, uh, reports uh, and diagnosis and case history because it is highly confidential matter. But with a proper questionnaire for the study, uh, we were able to uh, get the data after giving them uh, convincing answers and we justified the study, we were able to get a lot of data. So these are some of the parameters of the questionnaire for the study for the direct method. These are just some of them I have mentioned here because I had to give some inclusion and exclusion criteria also. So age, gender, blood group, daily habits, if a patient was uh, uh, having any habit of alcohol consumption or tobacco chewing, uh, metal yeah, industry or yeah, mines may work together to etiological factor could be dust from these mines or metal industry which could, which could cause uh, oral cancers. Uh, amount of alcohol intake per day, even that was an important criteria. Which tests were used in diagnosis? At what stage the OSCP was diagnosed? What was the tumor size before, during, and after treatment? Any viral infection to judge whether the tumors were due to any HPV infection, viral infection, uh, due to any retroviruses, and any biomarker, uh, biomarkers that were studied during the test. So these were some of the questions that we need. So this is just the hospitals from where the offline data was obtained to meet the terms of the study. 
uh, we could get uh, reliable data from three hospitals, uh, IGMC, Government Medical College, and uh, RST Cancer Hospital. The N is equals to 95. That was the sample size that we could get good data for. And the online data for comparative study was obtained. We had a huge number of samples there, which was 792. Uh, online data was retrieved from the NBIA data retriever tool. And this is the data citation where anybody could go into the click and find out the, what kind of data was there available. Publications also, we took some help of publications. So we got a good amount of uh, data set from this particular publica publication of Quan and Wang. And uh, PCI was a very good resource for information uh, retrieving. It is a very good repository. So we got a lot of information from the TCIA uh, for all the three uh, cancers that we needed to study. So we started with data segregation and then we proceeded with in silico analysis. So we did the secondary data or the primary data we got uh, from both direct and indirect methods was used to study the central tendency, mean, median, mode. These are the basics of statistics. So I won't go into the depth of each of it, but we studied for each data set the mean, median, mode. I did measures of variability and spread uh, with respect to SD, variance, percentile, mean deviation, range, quartiles. All these were studied for each of the data. I have not shown in my slide this particular thing. Measure of central tendency. And nowhere in my slides you'll find measure of variability uh, because this was background study that we needed to do. In this presentation, it is not possible to show most of the slides. Then we did some graphical analysis so that we get a quick idea of what uh, different trends we were seeing from uh, direct and indirect methods. And we did some ANOVA steps. Uh, to do ANOVA, we all are uh, acclimatized with the Excel uh, of MS. So here you see. This is the data where we work in and the step to involve data analysis. The step three involved ANOVA as a single factor, two factor with replication, two factors without replication. We studied single uh, factor at a time because if we take more than two factors or two factors, it becomes rather difficult to compare the data because as it is, the data was humongous 95 and 792 for oral cancer. And then we gave the output ranges, we gave the input ranges for each of the data set, and we went in for the ANOVA analysis. So what we did was for the offline data set, whereby the total sample number was 96, we did an age-wise analysis. So if you see GMC, IGMC, RST, and other hospitals also we put in include some data. That's why I put it as general. So if you see from the age group of 22 to 30, I have to 91 to 100. And I have got the number of patients mentioned here in this particular table. I plotted a bubble plot so that it is easy for me to know where in the highest age is analysis I could get. So you can very well clearly see here. This makes it more clear. 41 to 50 age group, lots of cancers were uh, seen in the age group of 41 to 50 with highest number of OSCC patients. So it contributes to 23.22% uh, in the entire study group. Then we did some analysis on tumor site. Uh, where did we find majority of the tumors for again that particular data set from GNC, IGNC, RST in general. So these were the different sites of cancer or tumors uh, which I showed you in the pictorial graph. And if you can see here, highest numbers were seen from IGMC whereby after this particular graphical analysis, we could very well clearly see 
buccal mucosa was the primary site of 32.63% followed by tongue and supraglottis. So buccal mucosa was the tumor site which was more affected with the primary tumors. So when we studied the summary of the offline data sets, what we found was we did an age-wise study, we did an age-wise and gender-wise analysis also, and a tumor-wise analysis also. We did descriptive statistics for both, all the three parameters, and we could come to the conclusion that the highest patient count in the age group was 45, 41 to 50. Male diagnosis for oval cancer was seen at a very young age than in females. And uh, when we did inferential statistics like ANOVA, we could clearly compare between the genders and age. And uh, descriptive statistics again gave rise to uh, uh, finding that mucal, buccal mucosa has maximum number of patient counts followed by tongue and supraglottis. Then we wanted to see if this is the scenario or offline data set, what would be the analysis you know, on, uh, and observations of the online data set, which was huge, which is 792. So we did age-wise and gender-wise analysis for this too. So we have an age group here from again 0 to 20 to 91 to 100. We have number of male patients, we have number of female patients, and this is the total that we see. We took out the p-value value to know whether the uh, data we have got is uh, significant. So this revealed if you can see here the graph also shows number of males is higher uh, uh, with OSCC as compared to females. Males diagnosis percentage was higher than females with a value of 79% versus 21%. So 79% of the males were with having OSS as yes, In age-wise analysis, it was found that between 50 to 70 years of age, there are no chances for cancer to develop and to be detected. Then the third parameter that we studied was smoking habit statistics. So if this is the smoke number of patients with data set 2 and this was 790. We have the smoking habit, number of males, the percentage, number of females, the percentage, and the total percentage. Those who are currently smoking, those who are former uh, smokers or ex-smokers who have quit smoking, those who were non-smokers who did not smoke any time in their lifetime, then there was lots of patients whose, whose data was not available, but we had to include it because they were a part of the 792 uh, sample size. So no data that was on smoking habits, and then took out the mean values and the p values for each of this. After getting the p value, it was very well known that uh, we can proceed with this particular data set for analysis. So this is what the picture looked like. So we could very well clearly say how many were current smokers with the tumor, which were former or ex smokers with tumors, who developed tumors. Uh, there was no data for some people, but still they had tumors. So we could say smoke was not the causative agent for them. They could be working in some mines or some, uh, they could be having some infections or something like that. So this particular uh, data revealed the uh, smoking relevance or no smoking relevance to development of cancer. Then we come to the fourth kind of analysis, the tumor site analysis. So we studied gender-wise the number of males and females uh, over a year. So this is the tumor site uh, distribution data. It was observed that most of the common site of tumor <coughs> was found in the tonsils, which includes 317, followed by base of the tongue and overpharynx, which is the second and most strong. If you keep in mind, the offline data set showed us the buccal mucosa was the so we can say regional variation with respect to Vidarbha and MP patients was for buccal mucosal site. Whereas the international data, uh, it is showing that the base of the tongue and overpharynx is second strong site. So this was one thing that was repeated in our analysis. The grade of tumor, like the PNM staging I explained, 
that will help us with the grade of tumor analysis. Again, the number of males and females with age we have done. So this is the grading 1, 2, 3, 4, P, 4, and 4, P. And the P values after doing the significance test of significance was good enough for us to go around with this data analysis. So this is what we could find. With this. And the result was the grade 4 a was found to be the most common grade of tumor, which was in 479 patients out of the 790 which contains on the 60% of the population of the over cancer patients. So when was the tumor diagnosis? It was at a very late stage. Paper 4A means metastasis has already occurred with distant organs. So if we study on the basis of metastasis, the M, okay? So metastasis was local, regional, or to distant organs. This was the study that was done uh, significance values were significant values but and how many patients uh, are alive at the point of uh, collection of this data and how many were dead according to the reports this was something that was done and we could very well see that the number of dead males was more with metastasis found in the distant orbits. So, out of overall data, which includes both alive and dead population, can be conclude that, concluded that distant population was more prone to metastasis as compared to uh, nearby areas may uh, metastasis were. Distant uh, metastasis, those people were mostly not living or surviving in. Then we have a, up till now we had done a study of offline data differently, separately and online data. Then we thought why not compare the two persons. So this is an age, age wise and uh, comparative of data set one and two. This was age-wise comparative. So this descriptive statistic show the average age of patients from data set one is 51.27, whereas average age set for data set two is 59.4. So that we have to see that uh, data set one is from the local region. So earlier onset of cancer is seen in uh, Vidarbha and like the local area, Vidarbha and MP as compared to international data. <laughs> data set one, it was found that 80 years was the maximum age where a patient was diagnosed. Whereas in data set two, it was seen that it is at 83.11. Then, if we see the minimum age of the patient, it was found that 24 is the minimum age where a patient was diagnosed. So 24 say 80 the age may anywhere the diagnosis could happen. And for data set 2, it was from 30. So detection of cancer in the local region is at an early stage and it has happened till a 80, yeah, till the age of 80. That is in case of international patients, yeah, the detection was at a later stage or onset was at a later stage and also the Diagnosis is still a later stage. From this study, we can conclude, already I have told you the conclusion. We have compare, compared the Vidarbha region versus worldwide data. Uh, in Vidarbha, buccal mucosa is a commonest tumor site, uh, whereas for worldwide, it was the tongue and uh, F that got us. Causes were due to smoking, tobacco chewing, and drinking habits in the Indian population of the Vidarbha region. Smoking habits also we have seen. Former smokers were more affected, that is 35.27%. Stage tumor staging, stage 4 was more predominant, 60% and higher. And in the study of metastasis, 36.07 showing distant, met distant metastasis in the study population. So this was with respect to oral cancers. Okay. How we approach the uh, same uh, methodology we have followed. 
but how did we uh, take into consideration breast cancer patients we will study this so i will not go into the introduction of invasive breast cancer uh, what is breast cancer now this is the slide showing the statistics and uh, of the breast cancer among various different groups of people between men and females with different ethnicities ages etc i would like to focus on this type uh, this slide which uh, tells us the types of breast cancer we have invasive non invasive and other types invasive is global and ductal non invasive is globular carcinoma in situ and ductal carcinoma in situ and there are many other types which occurs in men one is inflammatory breast cancer and pages disease of the nipple uh, for our study do we kept some inclusion and exclusion criteria because that helped us gather only uh, i mean the data was there for a while but then after putting uh, in place the inclusion and exclusion criteria we could exactly get the data that we needed to for meta analysis so we included women greater than age 40 or equal to age 40 excluded women below age 40 with uh, pre existing breast cancers uh, intervention all methods of screening by mammography were included then we excluded mammography for diagnosis of surveillance comparisons were made to be included from 40 to 49 versus 50 to 59 versus 60 to 69 and uh, wherever there was data not provided by age interval or risk factor we excluded that data completely then immediate uh, timing uh, of diagnosis short term long term outcomes after treatment duration and follow up we included all those uh, samples which gave us information on all these parameters and we excluded all those samples whereby there was no follow up whatsoever with those patients so the objective of this research was interpret the metadata uh, interpret the metadata uh, do its analysis and we did some correlation and indexing of common factors related to so this is what i have already told you how we went about data processing which includes data cleaning integration reduction transformation discretization and then we analyzed it by analyze it data collection was done uh, for 270 patients in this case from regional cancer hospital and from online sources uh, 334 patients we could obtain data for breast cancer now the issue was there were so many other factors uh, when we were studying breast cancer for ovarian cancer there were not too many factors which could be studied so here we had to take one common parameter and compare it with the other parameter so in this data analysis we have taken age as a common factor and then we analyzed it by analyze it so first we uh, analyzed the rst hospital data with age so again we did the p and f values calculations and here what would be find was um, 94 number of patients in the age group of 41 to 50 were diagnosed with breast cancer as compared to breast of birth this is the cumulative distribution function of age by gender with respect to and the probability of getting cancer males versus females then we did what was the method of diagnosis that was adopted was it histology of the primary tumor was it cytology of the primary tumor that was studied for diagnosis uh, or were there any specific biochemical or immunological tests that were uh, done to know the biomarker status and thereby that make the diagnosis so we took out the p and f values for each of them and we could find out that between the age group of 41 to 50 majority of the diagnosis like for all like 21 to 30 also everywhere if you see the blue uh, bars uh, it was the histology of the primary tumors which uh, were the basis of uh, diagnosis for breast cancer then the age group with the age group with the 
anatom anatomical site of uh, specimens. So, so if we, uh, the colors indicate the anatomical site, the orange bar indicates the breast tissue, uh, the gray bars indicate the breast, the right breast, the left breast, the blue one. So if you could see, the majority of the cases were seen in both the breasts, which is in orange color. And followed by the green one, which is the right breast uh, in the age group of 41 to 50, and the left breast also in the 41 to 50. But only in the age group of 51 to 60, what we found was <coughs> The left and the right breast were equally affected. Then we did ER and PR status, that is estrogen progesterone status. Uh, there, there are tumors which could be double positive, that means ER and PR positive. They could be double negative, that is ER negative, PR negative. Single positive, that could be ES, ER positive, but PR negative. They could be PR positive, but ER negative. So there are these combinations shown over here. And what we found was, <clears throat> after the p-values and all, in the age group of 41 to 50, a lot of tumors were ER weak positive and PR weak positive for HER2 mutations. So what kind of mutations are giving rise to breast tumors? So your this HER2 positive and HER2 negative mutations are the uh, ones belonging to the EGFR family of uh, receptors, okay. the epidemic growth factor receptors. Because of this HER2 mutations, uh, the signal is continuously received by the EGF uh, receptor for the EGF and gives a, down, a rise to a downstream signaling. So this is the cumulative distribution function. <laughs> Type of treatment that was given you can see a adjuvant CT at the age group of 41 to 50. I'm focusing on 41 to 50 because majority of the uh, tumor cases of breast we found in the age group of 41 to 50. We can talk about n number of years, but we have a limited time span. And I'm still into the second cancer, so I have to also take up lung cancer. So we have adjuvant uh, chemotherapy being the predominant uh, type of treatment that was administered to all the patients. So this is the cumulative, I will skip. Then what type of treatment uh, so, uh, was given by means of surgery? So if you see how many people have opted for surgery, how many uh, doctors have advised surgery, yes or no, it is just. So and not applicable is orange in color. Adjuvant therapy is just a little. We have not taken that here. So if you see here, uh, lots of people have been... Uh, Lots of people or lots of patients have undergone surgery as such, and there are so many more who have declined surgery as such. Okay. So between the age group of 41 and 50, if you see, there is no greater comparison. They are almost same when 50% of them could you can say have opted for surgery, 50 have not opted for surgery. Then for with radiotherapy, people have like in the age group of 41 to 50 have not opted for surgery uh, at all. Okay, uh, a little difference is there significantly um, for people who have opted for radiotherapy. As well. Then how many people have opted for hormone therapy? Very few in either of these age groups as compared to uh, people who have declined hormone therapy. TNM grouping. TNM grouping is again to judge what stage the cancer is at. So if you can see a maximum cases were found for yeah the TN3 stage, T3 and 1 stages, right? So it was the third stage at which most of the diagnosis was done. And here, if you can see, at age group of 41 to 50, you can very well see that the state was 2A to 3A. So once we got this data, we did analysis of the online data. Again, we studied the metastasis stage. Uh, we first took out the PNF values to judge whether it is the data is significant enough to be included for analysis. 
and uh, it was done with metastatic stage as such followed by analysis with lymph node whether the um, tumor has invaded the lymph node that was adjudged at different ages then analysis by age with tumor stage was done again if you can see a uh, 41 to 50 age group the tumor stage was adjudged as t2 then we studied any new growths that means metastasis that has occurred again we did an analysis here so lymph node stage method type was also done histologic wise people doing whether it is infiltrating the ducts or the lobules or the medulla that was studied the er status was studied estrogen status Progesterone status was studied with age. Immunohistochemistry tests were available for some of the patients. So uh, we did immunohistochemistry for HER2 mutations. That was studied as well. We did some margin status. We studied uh, because online data was much, much more uh, revealing and there were so much of parameters to be considered which were there. We also menopausal status mind you we did not have any menopausal status uh, uh, with age we could but then yes or no there was no correct answer no the data was not available for the indian population from the hospital so but menopausal state was also um, studied at this particular point of time the vital status of the patient was also taken into consideration uh, whether the patient has survived or deceased that was also studied. Tissue source site was also studied. There were a lot of conclusions from these analysis. Radiotherapy was a much more safer than other surgical regimens for treatment of early breast cancer patients because of favorable balance between survival out. Postmenopausal women with HAR2 negative uh, tumors improved with hormone therapies versus the chemotherapy. This was a finding. So depending upon age and what kind of a tumor it, it is, one can go in for either radiotherapy or if it is a postmenopausal uh, woman, one can go in for hormone therapy as compared to standard chemotherapy, adjuvant chemotherapy. So, timely prediction of breast cancer was important to give rise to preventive measures. Uh, so we need an efficient application or an app for the detection and prevention of breast cancer. What are the future perspectives for these, this kind of a study? Diagnosis was very, very critical in treatment of breast cancer among women. One thing that we I was always interested in was artificial intelligence and how it is uh, spanning its way in health technology. So if somebody is, uh, comes up with a very good uh, background with artificial intelligence, one can collaborate with them to for, uh, into health technology for cancer. So breast cancer scans can be uh, introduced into AI. And so the detection of the tumor at an early age will lead to uh, treatment and longevity of the patient. So this is this was the outcome. So the usefulness of this metadata analysis to the doctors will help them uh, chart out a better treatment plan for breast cancer patients. This cannot be ruled out at all because of this study. The third kind of uh, cancer that we dealt was with lung cancer data meta analysis. I will not go into what. Lung cancer is um, lung cancer is one of the most uh, most deadly, uh, which is causing type of. Uh, if I want to see a small picture of the lung cancer and what kinds of lung we have, NSCC and small cell carcinoma. Today we have focused. I mean, for this entire study, I have focused my attention 
NSCC because it comprises a larger percentage so that way I could get more data. So it comprises of sub three subtypes, adenocarcinoma, uh, SCC, and large cell carcinoma. So I have focused my study on NSCC rather than SCC. So these are the 10 signs and symptoms of lung cancer. I will not go into that right now. These are the risk factors. So depending upon the risk factors, we can now design our study as to is it the environment or asbestos or air pollution, genetics, uh, radiation, uh, exposure to radiation, I mean. Uh, COPD, if somebody is suffering, can, it could be a very good risk factor for developing lung cancers. Minors are at a risk because of uh, uh, inhalation of minerals uh, causing lung cancer. Smoking, of course, is a... So, once I look at the risk factors, it becomes very, very easy for me to then, age or gender-wise, how do I compare with all the rest of the factors? So, what are the different... Stage, uh, treatments for different stages. For stage one, usually surgery. Uh, stage two, also surgery. And depending upon where the site is, they go in for chemo and radiation therapy for stage three. And uh, photodynamic uh, therapy. This is, this is therapy. It is wrongly misspelled here. So that is for stage four. Diagnosis is not again a big deal because some do endoscopy, some do biopsy, uh, biopsy some. To a CT, MRI, PT, chest X ray. So there is no uniformity of diagnosis also. But the good news is, lung cancer is no good news for anybody, but the good news is there are five different biomarkers which have been uh, very well used these days uh, to diagnose a particular uh, disease. So we have EGFR as one of them, uh, epidermal growth factor receptor. We have KRAS, which is a uh, 66.7% to 40% uh, it shows uh, its role. If uh, KRAS is uh, mutated, then that is a very good biomarker. Anaplastic uh, lymphoma kinase, ALK, uh, it is uh, this is a biomarker which is, uh, which is actually doing translocation and 2.7% of lung cancers are due to ALK translocations. Now, ALK, if a person is a non-smoker or a light smoker, this biomarker is usually the one which brings about translocation and thereby DNA damage. So, if a person during a case is taking up the case history or when going to a doctor says, I'm a non-smoker or I'm a light smoker, rather than going for KRAS, it's much better if one goes for ALK, ALK. Uh, biomarker detection. Then uh, CMET is a membrane receptor type the seen kinase and TTF is a transcription combination factor. So each of them have a role depending upon if a person is a light smoker or a non-smoker or if he or she has a family history of lung cancer. So during a visit to a physician or a primary health care or a cancer specialist, it is important to give the entire history input so that a proper diagnostic marker can be uh, put into place uh, so that the diagnosis can be made. Then again, this is a retrospective study, a cohort study. Um, we are going to put in an insight into patient's data for outcomes. Again, the same strategy was used. Again, the aims and objectives were to analyze the secondary data and generate the segregation of data into secondary data, analyze this data. Again, I used age, weight, staging, histology side grade from the generation. But then it was very difficult because some were smoking and non-smoking population of patients. So I again had to use these particular parameters of smoking and non-smoking. So I had to see uh, eventually histology type, gender, weight, staging, histology site, all were given for most of the patients. I had to first see whether it was smoking or non-smoking patient. So I then did a comparative study between two populations of smoking and non-smoking. This was the data collection that was done from the Data set PS1 was data set 1, PS2 is data set 2, uh, DS3 was data set 1 and 2. So, MGIMS 
I got data set four, and these were the list of parameters and uh, cancer hospital Pinaki Nakul TS5 for smoking state, the sentence. So these were the data sets. The data set one and two, which was online, was from Stanford and NCI USA. Data set three is from Netherlands, and data set four and five was from Sevagram and Nakul, respectively. So we did this analysis. Uh, we performed the basic uh, test for central uh, tendency and ANOVA. And then we started doing the gender and age profile of data set one patients. So data set patient one is Stanford USA. Okay. So we had males and females according to gender. We had them arranged. So this is not the data which is available at the Stanford data set. Okay. It was a human this data, right? I had to filter out the data, segregate the data, gender and age group, and then smokers and non-smokers. And where it was not recorded whether they are smokers or non-smokers, I put it as any and the token, and then I took out the significant values for each so that whether I could use this data for analysis. Similarly, tumor site location, I did not get a data like this. It was a continuous uh, Excel sheet of numerous columns and rows, which I had segregated, reduced. I have used the pre-processing parameters, and then I am here with the smokers and non-smokers data with respect to the tumor site and histological length. Similarly, now I have arranged this particular data with respect to histopathological grade of the tissue as such for smokers and non-smokers. This is the data that I have rearranged for smokers and non-smokers with respect to number of cases and stage-wise, PNM staging, N-group staging, and PNM group staging. And for each, I have then done a pre-test. Then again, kind of tumor, even though it was a NSC, NLSC, but then basaloid, keratinizing, non keratinizing solid adenocarcinomas, squamous cell carcinoma. I had the number of cases and then TNM staging. Again, I did a pre test. Then histology and age profile of data set one patients on the basis of gender was done. Then number of cases on the basis of smoking status. This is data set two. So whatever test uh, segregation of data I did for data set one, the same I did for data set two, three, four, and five. These are all the charts for PNM staging of data set two patients here. One thing I could see was uh, I could get a mutation profile in data set two patients, which was absent in data set one patient. So here I included this particular slide. I segregated the data with respect to mutational profiles uh, on the basis of histology. So if you can see here, I could get an EGFR mutant, whether it was EGFR, which was the KRAS and the AMK mutation. For each of them, I did a P-test then. So you have to be very observant and very vigilant when you're doing, uh, when you're studying the online data sets. So you have to have a bari nazar se dekho, kahi pe koi is isme kuch hai, to is isme kuch extra mil jata. Like in this particular case, data set two, I got mutations ka follow. So that helped me for 172 adenocarcinomas and NSCLC not otherwise specified for squamous cell carcinoma ka bhi mila hai mujhe. The total were 211. That's a very sizable data. Only one column which gave me all this data. So this was a very good study for studying which mutations were responsible for lung cancer. This was with respect to basis of gender and histology profile. Again, mutation profile for data set two. This is the same set of uh, segregated data, disease staging, etc. for data set three patients and four and five also. 
histology profile and four and five are uh, regional data set. What did we find with all these things? This is just the summary of which data set was used for comparison with online and regional hospitals. I used one, two, three. I used four and five. How many cases uh, that is sample size kitna thabo bataya for my P results to stick to it. See if you can see a lacuna that I could very well see. Indian population or regional population, I should say. They never go in for biomarker based diagnosis. Jabki EJ Park, RAS, ALP, they are the ones which actually give rise to uh, how the treatment modality should be. Other than that, the treatment would not be successful. Eventually, if you are uh, dealing it and uh, lung cancer is a wholesome, it will not work. So the treatment modality has to be set upon depending upon the, what kind of mutations or what kind of DNA damage has happened resulting in the lung cancer. So this was one thing that we could very clearly observe in this particular case. So this is just the analysis of the entire data set one, two, three, four, and five we have done. I will not go into the details. Again, it is a comparative data. Smoking pattern we studied for one, two, and data set five. So I wanted to compare between the smoking and non-smoking status. So, I studied each of the parameters between the offline and the online data. This is the same uh, thing that we have done. But then all combinations can be tested to draw up uh, conclusions. So for each of the distribution of the EJFR mutation, uh, I could see a wild type proportion is more frequent in both than females. Uh, adenocarcinoma subtype may be a mutation. Dika. EGFR mutants uh, were more non-smokers, so we can always repair EGFR uh, biomolecule uh, biomarker uh, test for non-smokers. So this thing has been KRAS mutation was detected more abundantly in males as compared to females. So if it is a male patient, one should go in for KRAS. Uh, if it is an adenocarcinoma which has been suspected, KRAS biomarker study should be included. Smokers, non-smokers hai to EGFR, smoker hai to KRAS mutation ke liye karna chahiye, uh, RP. Then, surprising thing about the ALK translocation was that male and female, both equal proportions were seen. Uh, but it was only seen in adenocarcinomas. Uh, and it was seen that both smokers and non-smokers, this ALK translocation was seen. So, for e, with EGFR, an ALK biomarker study has to be done. With KRAS, an ALK translocation has to be done to see whether this biomarker is present or not. And then, depend up, depending upon it, the treatment strategy can be this, These are the conclusions of the entire study that was done. The only... There were, after all these conclusions, there were... A, limitations which we could very well see in the uh, when we compared the worldwide and the regional data set. Clinical and treatment details and data of the patient was not available uh, as such. None of the hospitals that we visited said that uh, we will give you a detailed treatment or clinical plan that we have administered to this patient, nor was it available on the uh, worldwide data. It was also seen data sets that were retired from the online database contain more details as compared to what we got in the regional person. Uh, thirdly, in data set three and four, smoking history or other habits were not recorded in details because so which impact of several factors or habits on lung cancer could not be studied in details. Both the detailed biomolecular testing is not performed in regional hospitals. Uh, I have already mentioned this particular. So trends in different regions of the world, uh, the impact of smoking on lung cancer was seen through the study. Uh, the mean age of lung cancer detection in India is changing due to the smoking trend. And we could also see incidence of rate of lung cancer 
came down or declined with reduction in smoking. Then such kind of a trend was seen in the USA, but in Netherlands and Northern India, uh, or Northern means of now regional India, a uh, regional Dharpa uh, region, this trend was not seen. So maybe with a few years of time with decline in smoking, this trend would be very well be seen. So this is about my work that I have done in the analysis of primary data from offline and online databases. If you have any questions, I will gladly answer them. Yes, thank you one and all for a patient theory. Thank you, Manya. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Vishal, I can't hear you. I said thank you uh, for the informative lecture. Thank you, Vishal. I know there was a lot of data, and by we life scientists usually cringe from mathematics and statistical analysis a little bit. But let me tell you, uh, statistics is biostatistics is a very important and a powerful tool that we should use to come to certain conclusions, which are an eye opener, at least in my case. Dr. Shilpa, thank you so much for your patient hearing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hello, madam. Yeah. This is Vivek Narkhedkar. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, Vivek Narkhedkar, am I audible? Hello. Hello. Uh, I am Vivek Narkhedkar. Am I audible? I want to ask a question. Yes, yes Dr. Vivek, you are audible. Uh, actually, my question is regarding statistic only. Yeah. Uh, uh, you talked about the various uh, reasons which causes the cancer in patients. Yeah. So my question is, uh, have you find out or uh, how to do analysis uh, with the with the interrelation between the factors? Yes. So is there any relationship? Yes. And uh, what are those parameters that could be applied for finding the interrelationship between the factors? Okay. See, uh, there is one parametric analysis and one is non-parametric analysis. So how many variables you will be having? Like for the case of oral cancer, there were four or five variables. For breast cancer, there were eight to 10 variables or parameters, okay? So mm. I could not do one, uh, uh, one parameter I have to keep constant. That was age, okay? Yeah. So I kept yeah. that constant and I compared them with each of them. But mm. it is possible since I'm not having a biostatistics background, I did one-on-one. -on -one. I did age with PR, ER status. I did age with, in case of breast cancer, and see, uh, age with gender, age with, okay, I studied one by one-on-one. -on -one. You can do one on two or more than two also, okay? But then that generates a lot of data and a lot of, uh, like if you represent it graphically, it becomes more complicated. Right. In one of the, like, now if I have a sample size for breast cancer, 72. So there will be 72 different bars or graphs for each of the parameter. So oh. that becomes, then to extricate, to study that graph and to take out information from that becomes very, very difficult. Because if you're dealing with a multifactorial or the uh, multifactorial or uh, variables or lots of parameters on work. So then it becomes very difficult to analyze those graphs as well. Hence, what I did was I first sorted out the um, primary data, right? And then from the primary data, I selected one particular thing that was constant age. And with the different age groups that I had, I compared it with the rest of the factors. But it is possible uh, to do. But then you need a statistician at hand. I did not take the help of any statistician, a statistician who would guide me or help me with the inputs. I just did it with the online software tools that were available. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have another question. Yes, sir. Uh, can, I, can I go ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, my next question was, uh, is there any relationship uh, with uh, cosmetics or body surgery treatment transformation uh, in case of breast and oral cancer? 
can I get? Uh, I'm not getting your question. Can you reframe it? Uh, cosmetic and body transformation treatments or surgery. Okay. Do they lead to breast or oral cancer? Okay. Resurrection. Uh, uh, body surgery. transformation. Body transformation, like implants. Implants, yes. In case of breast or oral cancer, yeah. cosmetic uh, surgery. Ke liye, if a, a surgery is done, mastectomy is done, can a resurrection yeah. surgery be done and how will it affect the cancer? Now, let me tell you one thing. Even with chemotherapy, radiation therapy and with extreme mastectomies, uh, it, the cancer regresses for a few years. But even if a single cell which is mutated, it escapes the blood during blood uh, flow of blood vessels during the surgery. Okay, mm. that may go and uh, travel into the bloodstream and may form a new growth or niche in a different dis near organ, nearby organ or distal organ. So hence, usually it is seen that people who have opted for surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy, after a few years, 8 to 10 years, 12 years into regression, uh, the cancer comes back. Oh. So if this is true with the normal uh, therapeutics that they apply, that is adjuvant chemotherapy, uh, radiation and surgical excision, if... Uh, surgical excision or radiation is done and a resurrection uh, surgery is done with respect to implants. Uh, there is still a chance that one of the cell might have escaped that particular organ and uh, it may develop into a tumor later on. So that chance is still there. Okay, thank you, madam. Hope I have thank solved you for your wonderful your... session. Thank you so much. Thank you, very Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, very good afternoon. This is Dr. Virendra. Hello, Dr. Virendra. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, I do have a question that ma'am, uh, whether uh, uh, whether an uh, inspected lipoma can turn into a, which is in benignant condition, can become a metastatic uh, uh, informant? Yes, it can. Any, only if it is not a benign tumor, it may give uh, go into malignancy. Benign tumors do not go into malignancy because they have a capsule delineating it from the rest of the tissue. So only when the bulk of the benign tumor becomes too uh, too much for an organ and its function, then only it is uh, hazardous, then only it is excised. Otherwise, benign tumors do not go into malignancy. But if the primary tumor itself shows uh, the six properties of a malignant tumor, that is, it is devoid of the capsule, it can go into angiogenesis, it can uh, survive itself by synthesizing its own tumor growth factors. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And, and as a part of treatment, which means a direct biopsy followed by biopsy, there would be a removal of that lipomatic sections directly. And it can be done. Yes. Yeah. Then it can. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, here, Madhuri Thakre. Hello, Madhuri, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, whether pollen grains of flower are responsible for lung cancer? There are lots of uh, cases of allergies known for pollen cancer, but if an allergy leads to an inflammatory response, which is continuously occurring for that, which becomes a continuous onslaught for the lungs, that inflammatory lung cancer may develop. Okay. There are because, uh, yeah, there are reports. Yeah. But I will say which specific pollen grains or something because eventually pollen grain allergy is a hypersensitivity reaction. And hypersensitivity reactions always mostly occur due to inflammatory pro mediators and mediators. So the constant med in inflammatory uh, reaction is hosted by the uh, host cell or the host individual system, immune response. Then there is a okay. tendency for uh, inflammatory lung. Diseases as a result, uh, it will give rise to lung, uh, inflammatory lung cancers as well. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Nice Thank session, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Dr. Sandhya. I cannot hear you. Uh, madam, I am unmuted myself. Dr. Sandhya, could you type your... Uh, question because uh, I cannot hear you. It's echoing. Yeah, I am yeah, typing. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Yes, ma'am. She is typing in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Myself, uh, hello. Hello, Dr. Santosh. Dr. Santosh Madare. Uh, yeah. Very nice information. Uh, my question is, so there is a lot of difference between the male percentage cases and female percentage cases. Yeah. What will you Santosh, what will be the reason behind this? There is a uh, very big difference between male percentage and yes. female percentage. For which particular cancer you are talking? I vote, I vote. Yes. In all the cancers, general? General. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me answer this question. First of all, the male anatomy is different from the female anatomy. The male hormones are different from the female hormones. If I am going to talk about oral cancer, uh, the environment, the uh, etiological risk factors that I have mentioned, if it is uh, betel nut chewing, uh, diet, uh, alcohol consumption, etc., uh, tobacco chewing, quid, that is more, that habit is more into uh, males as compared to females, but then there is a population of females, so even that matters. As this was for oral cancer, for breast cancer, again the hormones are different for different, uh, both the males and females. Uh, so ER, PR uh, status, hence the uh, incidence of breast cancer in females is higher rather than males. Only 0.02% males have suffered from breast cancers uh, as is the data available over the net. Uh, but Maximum cancers of the breast are seen in females due to hormones and menopausal. And if there is an early menarche and a late menopause, even that will uh, increase the rate of breast cancer. Breast cancer, fat, uh, breast tissue, breast fat tissue content also is a uh, has a direct uh, correlation with incidence of breast cancer. Higher the breast uh, fat tissue higher will be the incidence of breast cancer in females. So you just cannot compare ma gender wise male and female. You have to consider gender wise age and some other parameter as well when we are doing a statistical analysis. I hope I have satisfactorily answered your questions. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, myself, Dr. Shashi Jambulkar. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I'm audible, ma'am. Can you hear, ma'am? Dr. Shashi, yeah, yeah, you're audible. Okay, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, uh, there's a family member. She was Pardon? suffering from breast cancer. Yeah. And uh, she was in uh, grade two, second stage. All right. And, and uh, lumpectopy has been done, ma'am. Okay. Uh, chemo and radio is not been uh, necessary. And doctor has that. Only medicine, uh, they are provided for six months. And okay. one injection is there every month and she wants to take one injection and medicine too. So right. I want to know that uh, is it needed to take a second opinion or uh, it will be because six months is very long period, ma'am. And uh, carcinoma cells multiply fast. So it just, um, it's a very close family member. That's why I'm asking, ma'am. Okay. You should take uh, a second yeah. opinion or uh, see we uh, as human beings, we as individuals, we as life scientists uh, have a tendency to study more and then say something or the other. I'm yes. not a doctor of oncology or anything, but with so many years of breast cancer work that I have done, I will tell you one thing, ma'am. Whatever the treatment strategy that has been planned by your doctor, planned by the patient's doctor, uh, mm -hmm. Have faith, first of all. Secondly, uh, after the treatment has started, were any tests done in between to gauge the efficacy of the treatment that is being given? First question is that if um, any tests have been um, done, how those reports have reflected uh, with respect to the, on diagnosis, the reports were there, you compare with them. Okay. Right? If yes, you see an improvement in the profile of the patient, okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, so because PET, after six months, the PET scan had been done. So mm -hmm. then only they correlate with the previous report and the 
currently report then only the time that the doctor has given for the second pap smear test to be done right yes ma'am yes so i think if, if the window is 6 months ka jab tak aapko medicines khana hai to wo time to dena hi padega na because let me tell you cancer of any organ or any organ in is the cancer of age and it is multifactorial and it is a slow process unless and until it is an aggressive cancer okay an aggressive cancer the patient uh, the diagnosis is always at a later stage and uh, uh, the, the prognosis also is not good but i think in this particular case if the window period uh, for trying the medicines and getting another test done is 6 months we cannot hurry that 6 month period one should wait for those 6 months i think but you can do one thing if, if he or she is a close relative uh, you can just take the reports to another doctor and show them this is the treatment that has been given is it okay to wait for 6 months or should we do another day? that is something that we can take always a second opinion yes ma'am i'm asking yeah yeah uh, ma'am there okay. is question in the chat box by sandha ma'am yeah. uh, what are the chances of cancer risk after hair coloration or treatments what is the question ma'am what are the chances of cancer yes. risk after hair coloration or treatments okay uh, see i have not studied this particular uh, facet of cancer till date but cosmetics hair color or creams or whatever they contain paraben okay even our shampoos conditioners contain paraben and paraben is known as a known it is a well established carcinogen okay so what we eat even hum jo that ye to hum cosmetics ki baat kar rahe hain even dietary consumption of anything in excess because all the food stuff contains some or little amount of carcinogen let me give you an example hum ब्लैक पेपर को ग्राइंड करके खाते हैं डालते हैं ना गार्निशिंग के लिए इवन दैट कंटेन्स पाइपरिडीन व्हिच इज कार्सिनोजेनिक इन नेचर सो राइट फ्रॉम डाइट टू कॉस्मेटिक्स दे आर ऑल देर आर कार्सिनोजेनिक केमिकल्स प्रेजेंट इफ नॉट डायरेक्ट कार्सिनोजेंस दे कुड बी इनडायरेक्ट कार्सिनोजेंस लाइक वंस अप्लाइड एंड ऑब्जॉर्ब इन टू द स्किन दीज प्रो कार्सिनोजेंस मे गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू कार्सिनोजेंस एंड विद प्रोलॉन्ग यूज ऑफ दीज कलरेशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट्स मे लीड टू कैंसर सो वी हैव टू बी वेरी विजिलेंट एज टू वॉट इज द कंटेंट एंड फॉर हाउ मच ड्यूरेशन आर वी अलाउिंग द कॉस्मेटिक और कलरिंग ट्रीटमेंट टू स्टे ऑन द surface of our skin right okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you yeah sure yeah 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 any more question kisi ko kuch puchna hai ma'am good morning to all of you ma'am am i audible yes, yes. ma'am ma my question is uh, direct means metastasis is uh, reported in all type of cancer is is it possible especially in in case of bone cancer see uh, metastasis is a stage 4 okay if the tumor is detected at an earlier stage if the treatment is given at an earlier stage if the treatment is success so whether it be chemo whether it be radio or whether it be surgical okay yes the detection it all depends upon the detection time when is the tumor detected if at stage 4 a tumor is being detected means the metastasis has already been has taken place to either nearby organs or distal organs so stage the tnm staging that i explained on the slide that is very important and at what point of time the diagnosis is being made and treatment being administered okay. yes so if it is a malignant tumor it will metastasize if left untreated in a few years because wo cancer cells multiply hoti rehti hai dysregulation hai uska control has been lost for cell division so they tend to multiply okay and they tend to extravasate go into the blood stream and then 
by breaking the basal lamina of the organ, going to the blood vessels, bloodstream, and into different organs, and thereby they have the property of sustaining by synthesizing their own tumor growth factors, and also they have the property of angiogenesis. So they tend to have their own systems in place for new growth. So if it is a malignant tumor, if the primary tumor is detected at an earlier stage, it will not go towards metastasis. But if the tumor size grows, and then it sells extra visit from that particular organ and into the bloodstream. Then it will cause metastasis. Thank you. Ma'am, there are a couple of questions in chat box. Yeah. Can intermittent fasting stop growth of cancer cells? Uh, Snehal, ma'am, were very good questions. Rather than intermittent fasting, I would say. Uh, proper diet and like a, a 10 to 12 hours fasting that is what you mean by intermittent fasting uh, yes lots of studies these days have focused on the dietary uh, patterns on the growth of cancer even there are studies which say that intermittent fasting along with proper dietary regimen in place will Reverse, reverse the cancer. There have been lots of studies. Swapna ma'am, that's yes, a very good question. Okay ma'am, thank you, thank you. Ma'am, I have one question. Good morning ma'am. Is morning, there any possibility of breast cancer in those men who could not feed breast milk to the child? Uh, breast milk feeding, breast feeding is good for the children because in the early uh, breastfeeding hours after childbirth, the mother transfers most of her antibodies from the milk to the child so that the immunity of the child is guarded for a few days at the neonatal's birth. Okay. Uh, those mothers who could not breastfeed but are not obese have little breast fat have a lower incidence of breath, but there is no correlation as such. Let me tell. Snehal ma'am, is your question answered? Uh, Snehal ma'am? Yes ma'am. Huh. Yes, I tried yes, to answer your question. I think. Yes ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, this is Sheetal Zambures. Uh, can you hear me ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you ma'am. Ma I have just one uh, simple question. Madam, what are the other possible reasons due to which the cancer can cause other than family history and bad habits? Which particular cancer you're talking about, ma'am? Any cancer, ma'am. Any cancer. General cancer. So that's what yes. I'm saying. Uh, for every cancer of any organ, there is a particular set of etiological risk factors. Okay. Like for oral cancers, I told you the four or five for breast cancer, there is an added uh, a factor of uh, diet, exercise, obesity, okay, and genetic nature also. Like the okay. in case of breast cancer, BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are okay. the most important uh, factors. Mm -hmm. HER2 mutations, as in case of uh, lung cancers we saw uh, in case of uh, oral cancers we saw HER2 mutation so there was a genetic relevance there as in case of lung cancers we saw the KRAS, the uh, CMET, the TTF the EGFR and the ALK translocation so there is again a genetic uh, along with where the person occupational hazards, the okay. lifestyle Okay. Right? Oh, there are so many etiological risk factors for various cancers. So you cannot say only one or two are common to all. Age, okay, because cancer is known uh, as a uh, disease of the age, aging population. Okay. So even okay. that, so uh, like for breast cancer, the etiology is being a female. For males, it is only 0.2%. For females, it is more than that, right? 99.2%. Uh, nine eight percent. So okay. being a female itself is a etiological risk factor, right? Okay. 
that so due okay, to hormonal uh, imbalancing maybe uh, yeah so it is more in females so that may be the hormonal reason the there maybe yeah, the female, for females it is the brca1 and 2 genes not males do not have this brca1 and 2 for females it is the brca1 and 2 okay so and hormones and early menarche and late menopause are also the risk factors. Dense fat breast tissue is also one of the risk factors. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, so, ma'am. Ma Hopefully, I have answered your query. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful okay. session, ma'am. Thank uh, you so much, ma'am. Yeah. So, on behalf of UGC HRDC Nagpur and from all the participants, ma'am, I extend my thanks to you for delivering a wonderful session on topic meta-analysis of oral breast and lung cancers. Once again, thank, thank you. So you. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Thank, yeah. thank you. Can I leave, ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you, all of you. Now we will proceed for our lunch break. Uh, it is up to 1.30. You will be having lunch break of one hour. I will restart the meeting at 1.15 and please try to join uh, on time. We will begin our next session by 1.30. So, thank you all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.